No art suffers in the modern day quite like poetry. After many decades of refined but often stultifying existence at the end of the 1800s, poetry as a form embarked on a quixotic endeavour, more forthrightly and at greater risk than the other arts, but unlike them, it ran headfirst into the flank of the windmill. The foremost reason for this collapse was poetry's loss of its status as a patrician art. Few worthwhile poems are written as mere effusions of a dreamer's mind onto paper. Poetical traditions from all literate cultures have begun with the oral traditions of bards and epic storytellers, before developing into the pensive, intense, and mind-breaking written art. Each letter, each syllable, requiring a unique mix of spirit, emotion, and rationality in order to put right. Of course, modern poetry was always going to exhaust itself, but whilst it had fumes to run on, whilst its wheel was helmed by men capable of the task, it produced works that, without doubt, deserved their place in the grand canon. Such men, in their vision, could see the world around them for what it was. And so, some of the greatest works of modern verse, and all modern aesthetic, were all penned by reactionary authors. Baudelaire, Yeats, and Eliot are but a small few. Poetry, like other written arts, is deceptively plebeian, perhaps only because it requires no more than a pen and paper, if that, to scribble down what may be called verse. Prior to the forswearing of the metrical tradition, this produced humorous poetasters, but otherwise served no ill effect. With the coming of the modern age, however, poetry drowned itself in a false simplicity. In a station of the metro is a trumpet call to all those literate plebeians who fancy themselves a weekend art that requires no formal school or training. The gentle genius that invites the authentic poet unwittingly summons a stampede of both inauthenticity and mediocrity to crush it. Between then and now, even the nobility of a soulful subject was stripped away. As God was forgotten, and the world without him revealed to much misdirected outrage to be a sham, poets looked inwards to the only places that did not leave their pens static. And where has that left us? Now, bookshelves fill each year with endless volumes and chapbooks dedicated to the pondering, egotistical, masturbatory eye of the modern poet. Line after line is impregnated with nothing more than lists of dull, profane, personal grievances. The modern poet is a peasant, despondently tiling a plot of empty, eroded soil. He may put bits of rough chaff he finds upon the table, but they feed no one's soul. Worse still, of all the arts, poetry has been relegated to the most unnoble tasks of the cultural technocracy. The average poet of today is a young, and hopelessly uncultivated ethnic tool, with little else but mud between their ears, and a dauntless propensity to bemoan the richness of that mud. We can rest in the knowledge that good poetry, great poetry indeed, is being written. It will go on being written. Whether it will be read by anybody remains unclear. To save whatever artistic dignity remains, poetry must slip into this gloomy dusk like a partridge into the bush.